In this video, I'm going to show you how you can use Isaac software to dial in your power pod and if you happen to have a direct force power meter or DFPM on your bike, how to integrate that data and information into your Isaac ride file and into PowerPod. This ride file comes from a customer who is using PowerPod on a cross bike. That's a fine application, but it, it will require some changes and settings. The second thing to notice is that the rider is using what are called factory default profiles. You can see that right here. So he's using the standard weight of 205 pounds and also other factors that are standard to PowerPod. We'll need to update those as well. Finally, I'll note that this rider has a Garmin file that ends at .tcx. This file contains his direct force power meter data. I'll show you how to integrate that into the Isaac ride as well. The first thing to notice is that wind speed, which is in blue, is consistently lower than bike speed, which is white, throughout the entire ride. This is a sure indication that the calibration of the wind sensor is not correct where it is mounted on this rider's cross bike. What we're going to do is use the Analyze Check Calibration feature to correct this and to update the wind speed so that it is approximately the same as bike speed. We've started the window, and the first thing the uh, software will do is ask, did the rider draft in this ride? We're going to assume that he did not, so we're going to say no. Then a message will come up which says, did the ride end in the location where it started? Well, we can look at the elevation profile for the ride and see that where it starts is approximately at the same elevation where it ends. Now, we do see that the ride goes up a big mountain and then down, so we really don't know that this is an out and back ride, but for the purposes of this exercise, we're going to assume that it is, so we're going to answer yes. Once we answer yes, a new pop-up window appears. And in this window, we see the effect of changing the calibration of the wind sensor. The wind scaling factor, which is in the power pod out of the box is 1.32. The software updates it to 2.106. And when this happens, the average watts will increase from 149 all the way up to 165. That's a pretty significant correction. So we'll click the accept button to locate and load these factors into the file. Now you'll see that the wind has shifted up, and in fact there are places where there are headwinds and tailwinds, and places where the wind is almost the same speed as bike, so it's very calm. So now what's happened is that the watts have shifted upwards to reflect the fact that the wind speed sensor is properly calibrated. This has been loaded into the ride file, but there are other corrections that we have to make as well. Where we find the corrections is in the edit edit profiles window. We open this window and when we do we will see highlighted the most recent profile which is the one just generated by the check calibration ride. In fact we can see that the ride file was just tweaked or altered uh, just a few minutes ago. Now you may recall that the wind scaling factor increased. If we click on the advanced tab we will see that the wind scaling factor is now 2.106. That is significantly higher than what it was before and that's what's causing the higher watts. But we need to fix some other things as well. This rider is using a cross bike and if we go to the basic tab uh, he reports that he's using a wheel that has a circumference of 2106 millimeters. However, this is a standard road bike configuration in PowerPod so let's change it to measured and let's type in the number 2106. We've now made it so that the tire circumference is very close to what it actually is. Also, this rider has a total weight of bike and rider of 213 pounds. The default setting is 205. It doesn't make any difference which one I change, so I'm arbitrarily going to change the rider weight to increase it by 8 pounds. And when I do, notice that the ride weight increases to 213 pounds. These are effects that we will have now when we reapply this profile to the ride. I accept these changes of the ride file by clicking on the accept button. However, you'll notice that nothing changed in the ride file itself. We still have factory default profile and the weight. I actually have to update this ride file to reflect the changes in the profile. So I'm going to do that by using the command tools, switch profile after the ride, 
and a menu will pop up showing that now I have another ride file. This is before. Here is the ride file with the updated information for wheel circumference and rider weight and notice that the watts go up a little bit. So we'll click on accept and when I do you'll see that the watts increase just a little bit. We're getting closer to having this power pod dialed in. You'll recall that this rider has a TCX file and that he was using a direct force power meter. We're going to use an Isaac command to add this direct force power meter and other TCX information into his Isaac ride file. We're going to do this using the command file merge GPS power and other data from another file. I'm going to click to accept it and a pop-up window is going to appear telling you what kind of formats work and I will click OK to accept. A pop-up window will then appear showing where I have to go to locate the file. It's sitting on my desktop. Here it is and I open the file. It takes a few minutes for the DCX file to open. In this particular case he's using a quart power meter so I'm going to accept that read and sync the data. Now remember the data that's on the cork may not be lined up in time with the data that's on the power pod. In fact the power pod data which is in white and the cork data which is in red are mistime aligned. Isaac will automatically figure out how to line them together in time and when I click the accept button a new window will appear showing me all of the data that I can get from the uh, TCX file. Power data, speed, wind speed data of course comes only from the power pod. There's cadence data from the uh, uh, TCX file, heart rate, and so on. And in fact, here even is a graph showing where the bicycle ride occurred. That's the uh, GPS data that's coming probably out of his garment. I'll click the accept button, and after a few seconds, we now have the data. And notice that a new box appears in the main window of Isaac called View DFPM. DFPM is direct force power meter data, and I'm going to mouse over that. When I click on the box, you'll notice that the power data, which is in green, changes. There's the DFPM data. Here's the power pod data. DFPM, power pod. It's pretty close. But let's see if we can dial in the power pod even more. I've highlighted a section of the ride here where it is very flat. In fact, it's only about a 1% slope. When you're riding on the flats, the dominant opposing force is wind. And here we are showing the data recorded from the power pod, which shows about 216 watts. If I click the view DFPM button, it's about 231 watts. So the DFPM is actually recording higher watts on the flats than the power pod. Why is this? Well, the answer is because this is a cross bike. And on a cross bike, the rider is sitting up slightly higher in the air compared to a road bike, which means that the aerodynamic drag or CDA on a cross bike is higher. So what we need to do is adjust the CDA so that we get the same reading on the flats. We're going to do that using the edit profiles command. We're back in the edit profiles window on the advanced tab where we have both the aerodynamic and the frictional calculations. There's our 213 pounds. What we need to do is to adjust this factor of CDA up to reflect the fact that the rider on a cross bike is higher in the air. Notice right now that it's grayed out because the value is being held. What I'm going to do is click the middle button so that the wind scaling or wind factor is held. Now the CDA is in black which means we can adjust it and I'm going to make a guess. I'm going to guess it's about 0.42. That's a guess on my part. It comes from a lot of experience, but as you'll see, it's something that you can adjust by yourself. When I make that, the aerodynamic number goes up, which means that the uh, aerodynamic resistance is higher. I'm going to click the accept button to accept that calculation. Now remember, I've changed the profile, but I have to go back into tools, switch profile after the ride to update this information with the high higher aerodynamic factor. I'm going to click the accept button to do that. And when I do, the watts go up slightly. We've had 231 watts in this section for the uh, DFPM. I'm now going to click on the checkbox to see how good my guess was. That was a pretty darn good guess. The aerodynamic watts now from power pod are 231 watts and from the quark 231.3. 
What this effectively means is that this rider on this bicycle in this configuration has an aerodynamic drag coefficient of about 0.42. Now let's look at the overall results. If I deselect the highlighted area and make it for the entire ride, the cork shows 178.6 watts for the ride, the power pod 176.2. This is an extremely well dialed in power pod, working well with the quark. If we want to check the comparison between now the direct force power meter and power pod, we'll use the command tools, power meter comparison. And a pop-up window will appear showing the effect of all of the corrections we made in the power pod file, second by second compared with the DFPM, which in this case is a, a quark Cinco. You'll see that the power pod, which is in white, is nearly identical at all places to the Cinco. And in fact, I've set the second window to show power meter differences second by second, and it is very, very close for the entire ride. Interestingly, right here, there is a little bit of deviation where the Cinco is reading higher than power pod. That might be because the rider actually changed ride position. That would translate into a difference of CDA. Now that we have PowerPod dialed in, the final step is to put that great information into the PowerPod itself. I've connected PowerPod to the USB adapter so that it's connected to Isaac. You can see that because there is a green box around the USB icon. I go to Edit, Edit Profiles. I have selected the profile that I'm using, and now I simply click on the Send to Device button in order to transfer the profile into the PowerPod. I do that, a window appears saying that the profile has been set. I've now updated my PowerPod to have all my current information about wind speed factor, frictional factor, rider weight, and so on, as well as the wireless IDs for the sensor. This PowerPod is now dialed in and ready to go for cross bike rides.